Hey, it's Larry Lursey. Welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, we're going to take a look at extending the background. It's something that a lot of times you'll have something come up where you need to add a little more. Maybe you ran out of background in a shot or you're trying to size something out differently and you just need more space. And this is really a cool technique that you use. I use it all the time in the studio and I think you will find it really helpful and not too difficult. So we'll jump in and take a look at it. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel and click the little bell so you know when we have new content coming out. really does help and I would love to see you coming back to watch even more videos. So without any further ado, roll the intro. Okay, so here are a couple images we're going to work with. One just needs a little bit of background added, one needs a bunch of background added, and so we're going to take a look at how to approach these separately because you kind of have different techniques you'll need to use for them. So let's start with this one. Here's an example of something that you would typically have a problem in a, a studio portrait setting where you've either run out of background or maybe a kicker light has edged on to the edge of the frame like that and uh, is some something that needs to be removed. Obviously the easiest solution would be to just crop the image. We could come in right here and crop it in tight and it probably looked nicer anyways and we wouldn't have to deal with it. But sometimes you need this extra space. Maybe you're doing some sort of a canvas wrap, uh, like a gallery wrap, and you need that extra space to wrap around. So we're going to assume that we need all this space back and deal with this problem. First thing we want to do is make a copy of the background and work on the copy. It's just always good practice to work on a, a copy. One of the things you could try is we could come over here and use the clone stamp tool and just go ahead and try and clone this out. And as you can see, it's basically getting rid of it, but it doesn't look quite right. You're going to have a lighter, darker area. You could switch to a, a, a bigger brush with a lower opacity and try and smooth that out, but it's going to be a lot of work and you still got kind of a blotchy look back there. Uh, not the best way to go, so let's throw this layer away. Make another one start over. So here's how I would suggest doing this, and we're going to come up here and grab the rectangular marquee tool, or just hit M. And what we want to do is select as close to the elbow as we can. We're basically going to drag across and make a big rectangle as close to that elbow as we can. And this is the area that we're going to stretch across. Then what you want to do is hit Command T or Control T on the PC. And we're going to pull this out. If you've got one of the newer versions of Photoshop, you're going to need to hold down Shift and drag it across. Just like that. If you've got an older version of Photoshop, uh, you may not need to hold down Shift. At some point, it switched over where it used to do it automatically, where it would drag out like that. But now, if you just drag it out, it's going to go exponentially. Both edges will come out. So you got to make sure and hold down Shift while you're dragging if you're using newer Photoshop. So we've done that. Let's come in and take a look. And you can see it's pretty good. You don't really see anything in here. There's no telltale signs that we've extended the background. And you're good to go. Now, let's say you wanted more headroom up here at the top. Uh, I'm just going to quickly add, um, let's do um, image canvas size, add a couple of inches height to it. So let's say we want this gray to extend on up this way. Let me show you as a comparison why you want to go as close to the subject as you can. If we were to just grab a tiny bit like this, do Command-T, drag it up with shift. It's going to fill in the space, but as we zoom in, you will see it's created this crazy stretched noise, um, which will start showing at larger sizes. You can see here where it's not there, and then it shows up. And uh, definitely something you'd like to try and avoid if you can. So the way we're going to minimize that is to come up here, same thing, but get as close to the hair as we can. Command T, hold down Shift, drag it up. And this will be better. We still did a really big stretch. We'll come in and you can see it doesn't look nearly as bad in here. You can see it, but 
it's not nearly as bad as it was before. Now, what we have done, and this is something you have to watch out for, is she had a few straggly hairs, and we've stretched them as well. So you would want to make sure that you probably cleaned up some of these strays first before you drug that up to the top. But that's essentially what you're doing. You're using the marquee to select an area. If we wanted to extend this side, you would come just as close to that elbow as you can, Command T, drag it across. Let me show you what I'm talking about if you don't hold Shift um, with, the, with the newer Photoshop, is it's basically moving like that, where it's moving all the sides. So uh, you have to hold Shift to just pull that side out. Again, older photo versions of Photoshop are the opposite of that, so it depends on which version you're using. Just try both. If it looks like it's being funny, hold down Shift, or vice versa. So that's the essentials of what we're doing. So let's look at a slightly more difficult version. Okay, so what we have here is we've got the this layer on top that we've got this image uh, of the guy with the ukulele, and we want it to take up this whole space, that we're going to do it as a long, more panoramic type image. And we just don't have enough image here. So what we need to do is stretch this part out so that it takes up more of the frame. Now, when we do this, first of all, we'll probably move into a little bit like this, make our life a little bit easier. So we take some from this side and some from this side. But um, we're going to try and stretch it out this whole way. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is if we just go, let's go ahead and make a copy real quick. If we just go ahead and come all the way to the edge of the hat, Command T and shift it across, in this case what you will probably notice is that you'll start getting, you don't want to cut through something like this or like this where this really starts looking distorted and um, it actually looks okay through here but a lot of times you would have some of the bricks would look okay and then they would start getting distorted so when you're going for something like this so let's drop back to where we were going for something like this where it is a much bigger stretch than what we did on the other one you're gonna have to attack it kinda differently so first let's start with the easy one right here that um, this is gonna be pretty much like what we did before so we're going to go ahead and come right up to him, Command-T, drag across. Now this looks okay. Um, where you could run into problems here is where the bricks start getting way bigger here than they are over here, but I don't really see it here. If you looked at it and you thought it looked bad, then probably what you would want to do is start over again, and this time just select the window, like maybe up to the seam or something like that. Then we do our Command-T, just stretch the window over. Now uh, it doesn't look quite as, these bricks are all exactly the same. These are bigger, but they're also closer to the camera, so it makes sense. Um, so you could go either way. you got to kind of decide where the best place is. You want as much as you can, but at the same time trying to keep things as realistic looking as possible. So now let's take a look at this side. What I would probably do on something like this is treat this piece and this piece separately. So I would probably even, maybe even include most some of this doorway as a separate piece. So we'd come up here, just select here to this seam between the bricks. Do Command T, and I would go probably about half the distance, maybe about a little more than half like that. Hit return. Command D to get rid of that. Take a look at it and say, okay, we really can't stretch that part too much more. So now we're going to do the bigger selection where we're going to come all the way here to this door. Command T. Drag the whole thing again. And there you go. You've got a little bit of distortion in here, but uh, not really noticeable. I think if you were just to look at this image like this and you didn't know that we had just done that, I don't think that it would be obvious. The bricks don't look stretched. The text and things or whatever you want, the art doesn't look stretched. So I think pretty much here we have gone from that to that and it pretty much still looks just fine. Again, when you look at them back to back because you just saw it stretch, it's like, well, this looks kind of stretched. But I think that um, something like this, if you just wandered onto it and saw it, it would look just fine. Obviously this would be a situation where you'd probably want to dodge or uh, rather burn 
some of these to give it a little bit of vignetting so that uh, you didn't have kind of a the distraction of all this down here at the end to enhance the image a little bit further. But that's kind of two different ways that you can extend it out. Whether you're needing extra for a canvas wrap or something or to fill out a specific frame size or whether you're trying to get rid of an element uh, like we had in the last one with that light on the side. That's pretty much two different ways or basically two variations on the same way of how to use that transform tool to stretch out that background. And that should fix a lot of the problems that you have for those types of situations. So that to me is the best and easiest way to extend a background. I'd love to know if you have a way that you extend backgrounds that you feel like works even more efficiently. I'd love to hear it. Everybody's kind of got their own way of doing things and it's always interesting to hear uh, some of those other ideas. If this helped, I hope you'll take a second to like the video and maybe hit the playlist to watch a whole bunch of other videos that we've done on Photoshop to kind of give you an overall look at some of the different tools that this great software has. So I do hope that helps. I hope to see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.